When I was in college, I took an art class, and in that art class, the teacher instructed us to use something called atmospheric perspective, which doesn't, which isn't what it sounds like. It's basically just another name for fog. And the logic was that in real life, when you look at something really far, the air between you and that really far thing discolors the thing that you're looking at because there's so much air. So if you're looking at a distant mountain, for example, so you should color that distant mountain slightly grayer in order to make it feel like it's much farther in the distance. And so that's what we're tr going to try to do today. We're going to try and model atmospheric perspective or fog. So let's think about how it physically works. This is the eye and this is some scene. When the light strikes the scene, it will bounce off and some of it will refract towards your eye. Some of it will go in other directions, but then part of it will go towards your eye. And this is what we've been looking at so, so far. The diffuse and specular terms are the part of the light that bounces towards your eye. But we, what we haven't accounted for is sometimes there are little particles of dust that sit between your eye and the mountain. Little particles of air. And at times, the the particles of air will refract the light that was going to go to your eye away from your eye and you don't see it and it does not contribute to the image. And at other times, light that was going to be headed somewhere else, boink, hits a particle of light, a particle of air, and that light gets refracted towards your eye. It gets refracted in many other ways, but some of it will get refracted towards your eye and thus the interference of the air between your eye and the thing that you're looking at causes that discoloration that we know as fog. And you'll notice that the closer you get to the eye, the closer the thing you're rendering is to the eye, the less of a chance there is for those particles to refract the air. And the farther away you are, the more chance there is. So Clearly, how much fog there is in a scene is a function of how far our eye is from the thing that we're rendering. So let's see if we can get some kind of equation which can represent how much fog we should color a certain pixel. Because we're going to do all of this with, you guessed it, shaders. Shaders are what we've been learning. So. Uh, let's assign some variables here. We'll call P the position of the camera or the eye in the scene and X the position of the thing that we're rendering. And so the distance D is going to be the length of P minus X. So that's the distance from the, here it is, D from the eye to the thing we're rendering. Like I mentioned before, the bigger D is, the more fog there will be for that pixel. Now what we want is to make a function f, or a, a variable, let's say a variable f, that is zero if we want no fog, zero if we want no fog, or one if we want total fog. And then somewhere in between, if we want partial fog. So let's, let's, I'm just going to draw some lines here, okay? And if the thing we're drawing is to the left of this line, if it's too close to the camera, then we're not going to give it any fog. And if it's too far from the camera, if it's to the right of this line, then we're going to give it complete fog. We're not going to render the original thing anymore. It's just so far away that it's completely in fog. I'm going to call these D min and D max. D max. So if D is less than D min, if, then our fog is going to be zero. And if D is greater than D max, then our fog value is going to be one. But if, if D is between D min and D max, I'm running out of space then we're going to have partial fog and how we how do we determine 
what that partial fog should be. Well, we're going to use something we've discussed before, which is the remap function, which will give us a linear interpolation of whatever color that is here that we need. Hmm. Now, I'll show you in just a moment how we're going to implement all this in code. But first, let's take this f value, and we have one more thing that we have to do with it. We have a output color that we want to generate based on f and two inputs. We have the color of the pixel we were going to render and the color of the fog. And we have to weight these with f so that, so that we get an output that we want. And here's how we're going to do it. It's a pretty basic linear interpolation just like we've seen so far. We're going to color the original pixel by 1 minus f. And we're going to color the fog, we're going to multiply it by f. So if f is 1, then this will be 1 minus 1, which is 0. And that term will cancel out. And we'll get color of the fog times 1. So that's complete fog. And if f is 0, then we'll get 1 minus 0. So this will be 1. And we'll get the full color of the pixel. And color of the fog times 0, this term will cancel out. And for any value between 0 and 1, we'll get some kind of blend of the two. So that's it. That is our formula. Let's skip over to the code section and see it in work. So it's really simple. Here we are in the shader code. And here we get the distance from the fragment position to the camera. And that'll be FL distance. So now we have to create this f variable, which was a piecewise function, but I have this remap val clamped function, which will handle that for us. In other words, if the distance is less than fog min, it will automatically just return us uh, zero, and if it's greater than fog min, it will automatically return us one. So let's put that stuff in there. The order of these parameters is the same as it as it was when we did the original remap uh, function. So we're going to pass fog min and fog max and then 0 and 1. So when distance is fog min or less, then this function is going to give us 0 because we should have no fog. And when it's fog max or more, it'll give us 1 because then we want complete fog, all fog. And then this is the function where we mix the two. We multiply diffuse times 1 minus the fog, and the fog color times fog. So if fog is 0.5, we'll get an even mix of the diffuse color and the fog. And I chose a fog color that is a little bit like our sky color, because it's a good idea to choose a fog, because the sky is basically a completely fogged uh, color. When you look up into the sky during the day, all you're seeing is the light bouncing off the air before it gets up into space. So I chose a fog color that is basically a little bit like the sky color, but just a little bit grayer. So let's see how that looks. And you see as I get away from stuff that it turns into a sort of bluish gray. Good. And let's go and see what happens if we change these values, if we make them nice and small, 5 and 10, and run it again. Now we should be in a very thick fog because we pulled the fog values very close to us. And so things become completely enveloped in fog when they're not even that far away. But you can see that there are these very harsh uh, lines that result. So we want to try and avoid this. All we want to get our atmospheric fog is to <clears throat> have just a light fogging, a very light fog effect. And that gives the impression that we're looking at things through um, through a light haze. It's a subtle effect that may be difficult to see in the video, but it lends a lot to when, when you're in game and you're exploring a, uh, a, an environment. So this is the next to last video in the shader series. We'll see you next, next week to do the last one, which is rim lighting. See you then.